Uh, I just want to start off uh, this morning with some thank yous. Uh, thank our coaching staff first and foremost. Um, I went around the uh, the other day after cut down and thanked all those guys for their work and how they developed these guys. It's kind of a trend that's been here, you know, before uh, the transition was ma uh, made to bring me here. And I thank those guys because, you know, the day you're calling these guys in to let them know that they didn't make the 53 is a tough time for not only them, but for us as well. And the overwhelming response when we were asking guys to potentially come back on our practice squad was yes. And they want to continue to work with our coaches. So that was a testament to them. So I want to thank all of our coaches for that. Um, and then the scouting staff, um, our pro department, you know, Brian Gardner, Kevin Turks, uh, Brandon Taylor, Rob Ritterer, um, Aaron Sanders, Michael Johnson, Corey Cooper, you know, those guys wrote a ton, a ton of reports, you know, this summer going through everybody's roster uh, to help get us prepared for, you know, uh, not only cut downs, but the waiver claims. Uh, so those guys did a ton of work. I want to thank them. I also want to thank Sarah Bailey um, in our R&D department. You know, she's come in and kind of taking the bull by the horns and, you know, making this analytics department hers. And uh, she did a lot of, lot of work on um, basically bringing the data in with the scouting. And it, it's, it's amazing how, how it married, how we liked guys that were high on her list just purely from an analytical standpoint. So um, it's truly been a collaborative effort, you know, to get us this far. Um, feel good about where we are. You know, obviously there's still more work to be done. And, you know, I don't think there's ever been an NFL team that once the roster was set that first day that made it through, you know, the entire season that way. So we'll continue working to churn the roster and make the best decisions and build the best football team. So. Rookies overall, that, that's a fairly high number for a team that's, you know, going into the season. That's about 20% of the roster. What went into keeping all 11 guys, all the draft class, and five undrafted? I don't think we, we even looked at it that way. I think those guys earned their spot. You know, I think if you turn on the tape and you watch them, um, not only in the games, but you guys were here at practice, and I think all those people that made it made plays and did things in practice where they earned their way. Uh, nothing truly was given to anybody. You guys know how Mike is and and how he goes about business. So, um, you know, all of those guys, whatever the number was, uh, they earned their way, and it just made it easy to make the decision. I guess I don't know if it's official yet, but I guess Travis Gibson. Can you talk about about him and maybe what the team liked in him? Well, we're in talks. Uh, with Travis, so there's still some procedural things that need to be done to, you know, make it happen. So, you know, we'll cross that bridge when we get there and be more than willing to talk to you a little bit more about it. But um, we're just we're in talks right now. Can you talk us through Nick Falk? Um, what what's he bring? And does and and the kickoff situation the last couple of years for him has been kind of the downside. What do you envision there? Well, Nick is a vet. He's kicked in, you know all types of weather, been in New York, been in New England. So he's someone that we trust to make kicks. Um, and kickoffs is a part of his job. And, you know, if they're not touchbacks, then we got, you know, 10 people out there to cover them, and we expect them to do that. What were the considerations for trading for the kicker versus kind of waiting a day and seeing what happened on the wires, kind of what those conversations like? Well, you know, I, like I said, our pro department did a ton of work and had us prepared for those scenarios of who may come available, who may not come available. Uh, I don't know the exact number off the top of my head. I have it written in the office. But there were several teams that had, you know, two kickers on their roster. And, you know, most teams are not going to keep two. And so we did the research and felt good about our chances of getting someone um, here that we wanted to work with. And just another example of the collaborative process, you know, well before we even made the, you know, first moves to, you know, release the kickers, um, got with uh, Coach Opp. And, you know, Tom Quinn and Anthony Levine, and we had a running list of who we liked that could uh, potentially come free, you know, in terms of guys that were on teams. We had a list of guys that were on the street um, that we liked. So we had the position surrounded, you know, from not only a scouting perspective, or, uh, but from a coaching perspective, and felt good about getting someone here that we liked that we felt could help us. Well, the evaluation of the young kickers, what's the plan with, with Cade York? How are you going to look to develop him over? Well, I think it's just like any other position, you know, that we have on the roster. Um, you know, we have, you know, two guys at outside linebacker. We have three guys, you know, on the O-line that are, um, you know, that we're here to develop. And I think Cade is no different. You know, I don't think uh, having Cade here on the practice squad has any effect on Nick, you know, but he's just another young, talented player that we see talent in that we love to develop and work with for the future. And with, with a kid like that, you know, obviously the talent is there, but 
there's something going on. Do you look into like sports psychology or anything like that? For them? Well, we have uh, a staff here. You know, Dr. Mono, uh, uh, Dr. Mondo. Uh, Coach Manu and Dr. Sheila Peters, you know, they're all here to, uh, you know, help our players. You know, we have a great staff and Frank and um, Todd, and they get these guys right from the neck down, and then we got a staff to help get them right from the neck up. Um, so everybody has access to that, and, you know, we're here to help develop Cade, whether that's on the field or off the field. And, and where does he maybe fit in the group? Uh, Kendall's just another guy that's played a ton of football uh, in this league, um, started games. He can play outside. He can play inside. And it was just another way for us to get another talented players. Um, as you guys know, you can never have enough corners, you know, in this league. And so it was just an opportunity for us to, you know, get better at that position and get guys in here that's played a lot of ball. With those two young kickers, ran that you had through the offseason, does the evaluation of those guys just come down to, well, let's see what they do in these preseason games? And are you surprised by how it turned out based on what you thought of both of them going into the offseason? Yeah, I mean, it's again, it's just like uh, any other position. You want to give them the opportunity to earn their way. Um, and, you know, we saw them and felt like, you know, we had a chance to um, upgrade the position. Uh, so we did. We released both at the same time. And then we brought in Michael Badgley, um, gave him a shot at, you know, just him being here by himself for a week and gave him a shot. And again, we're, we're never not looking. Um, and that's at any position. And so uh, we had to, again, had the opportunity to get a guy like Nick Folk, you know, who I said made a lot of kicks in this league. And so it was, it's our job to always upgrade and get the best people here for us. You talked about upgrading or uh, developing Kate. How did you develop a kicker? You talked about, you know, two outside linebackers, but there are multiple outside linebackers to play at time, or there are multiple outside linebackers that are up on a game day. How do you develop a kicker outside of just him kicking the ball here? Probably? If I told you how to develop a kicker, I'd be lying. I've never coached the position, so I don't know how do you develop uh, a kicker. I just know that he's talented. He's made kicks in this league, and he's someone that Coach Auk and his staff want to work with. So that's our job as a personnel department is to get talented people in here that our coaches want to work with. And how that development goes, you know, when you guys have open practice, you can watch <laughs> what Auk does, and that'll go into it. But I couldn't tell you how to do it. So his development is on Auk? Well, his development is on all of us in this building. You know what I mean? It's our job to get him here. Like I said, we have people to work with him from the neck down. We have people to work with him from the neck up. And so what we'll do is we'll continue to work with him, help him work through whatever it is that he's he's working through. But again, he's an, another young, talented player here that we want to work with and hopefully has a future here. You seem to have been a run-heavy type offense for, for several years, obviously with Derek. But this year, only three tight ends and only three running backs on the 53-man roster. What kind of went into that decision? Just playing with the numbers um, and where you can, you know, um, again, create the best 53 and the best 16-man practice squad. You know, at tight end, uh, we're fortunate enough to get, you know, Raider back, get Thomas O back. So we have guys there uh, that we believe in and trust. And, you know, running back is just a position that we went light. Like you mentioned, Derek, you know, Derek's carried the load here, you know, since he's been here. So he factors in there a lot. Um, but again, it's manipulating the roster. And like I said, you know, numbers are not finished. Doesn't mean that we can't continue to make moves. It's just where we are right now. Knowing you still may do some tinkering, how do you feel about how this franchise has addressed the issues that last year's team had going into to the opener? Well, I think that was the, the number one thing in coming in here, you know, and being in this role was to, you know, address the things that we felt needed to be addressed. Uh, I felt like we did that, and, you know, again, we're, the work's not done, so we'll continue to do that. Um, you know, we had, what, three different wires yesterday, so still pouring through that. It's a lot of names, you know, to go through, and I've challenged the uh, the pro department to continue to, you know, look for guys that we like, that we had some level of like for, that maybe we thought potentially would get claimed and ended up on somebody's practice squad. So um, we'll continue to, to work that, and I'm sure we'll be talking a lot more about different moves that we'll make throughout the coming weeks. But um, that's our goal, and that's our job every day is to find the best people to bring here. Coincidence that your, your two vets are coming from Chicago, or did you have maybe extra good eye? Or, or no, nah, I think it's purely a coincidence. Um, you know, obviously we played those guys uh, in the first uh, preseason game, and I, if I'm not mistaken, I think Travis had two sacks. Um, one of them kind of pissed me off. Um, I won't go into it, but it pissed me off. And so when the opportunity came and we saw him, you know, we saw him as someone that fit our scheme. 
which was a cool thing. And then, you know, just doing the research and understanding, uh, feeling like we understand where uh, Chicago is going as a defense and the possibility of getting, you know, Vildor and having a, a guy in that plays, you know, multiple positions for us at the corner spot, you know, uh, helps us. First, how do you think he's kind of developed in the couple months since he's been here? And then uh, how do you like your what looks to be your starting O-line right now? Um, I mean, Peter is who we thought he was going to be. You know, he's just a consummate pro from the moment he stepped in. He's, you know, he's he's been a young vet, you know, if you will. Um, just the way he goes about his business, the way he prepares, the way he works. You know, he came in and had to learn our way and how we want uh, things to be done and some techniques that he may not have um, done before at Northwestern. Um, but he's bought in. He works his tail off. And, you know, he's, he's about where we expected him to be. Um, and then just overall, you know, again, uh, our coaches do a hell of a job of developing these guys and getting the buy-in. And I truly mean it when I say it. It's not smoke, you know, to sit there with these young men that we brought into the room and Mike and I talking to them. It was a cool experience and overwhelmingly, you know, positive experience with every guy who's been here. And you, it kind of permeates throughout the league. Like, people want to be here. You know what I mean? And that's a testament to our coaches and the way they go about their business. You know, there's never not a moment where these players – don't know where they stand, don't know what the expectation is. And so that makes it from as a former player, that makes it easy to go out and do your job when you know exactly what they want and what you're being coached to do. You got a few guys who are local guys from here. How cool is that that it worked out that way? For you know, what's funny is, I mean, obviously knowing, you know, Colton, you know, is from um, from here. Uh, I'll be perfectly honest with you. I had no clue that Matt Jackson was, <laughs> you know, and uh, you know, Mike was telling them on the week because we actually brought uh, a couple of the uh, undrafted guys in to tell them that they made it um, and had a couple cool moments, you know, with those guys. And when Mike was um, when we were uh, walking Matt Jackson out, you know, and, and Mike was like Hillsborough High, you know, to me, I'm from Florida. Hillsborough High is in Tampa, <laughs> you know, so I immediately like, oh, Florida boy. And then Mike said some other things and it dawned on me. I was like. Oh, he is from here. <laughs> and then to get a text from his agent, you know, who's locally based, you know, and how cool of a moment that was, you know, you those moments, man, is what this game is about. You know, guys, I remember a uh, guy who came out of my recruiting class, uh, Vernon Davis, um, excuse me, Vernon Carey. Uh, Vernon played at Northwestern High, went to University of Miami and was drafted by the Dolphins. So he never left home. You know, and so those stories are cool, and it's very rare that you get those in our league. And happy to share in that moment with these guys. That's not necessarily common to to bring guys in to say you made it as opposed to you didn't make it. You phrase those calls to bring them in a little differently as to not scare them. How, and how did you guys decide to do that? No, I mean we just thought that it was a, a good gesture. Um, these guys have worked their tails off, and like I said, as a former player, um, you know, having been through it and feeling like you made the initial roster and then only to come into a meeting and find out like there's still 20 more cuts to be made kind of drops your heart, you know. So I understood where these guys would be wherever they're at the hotel or just trying to find something to do around town to pass the time. And so we thought it would be a cool gesture and we um, brought a few of those guys in and kind of, you know, we started every moment with every guy with gratitude you know, showing our appreciation for the work that they did, the time and the sacrifices they put in here, and kind of just phrase it like, hey, you know, your situation's a little different, you know, today we just want to inform you that you made the 53. Uh, but with that came instructions on how to stay on the 53, you know, and so we wanted to share those moments. Again, you know, Mike and the staff do a very good job of letting these guys know what the expectation is. So when they got the call to come in, they, they had a hint that they weren't coming in to get bad news? I don't know what the hint was. You know, uh, we tell, you know, uh, Max Curtis does, um, you know, he calls the guys and we kind of just tell them like, hey, like, don't say anything. Just say, hey, you know, Mike and Rand need to see you. You know, can you come in um, and allow us to deliver the message? And so I'm sure that they, they thought they were being cut probably. I know that's what I would have felt. Um, but it was a cool moment to uh, really share with those guys, and you know we're extremely proud of them. You mentioned a lot of confidence from this week in, in some of the brighter spots, but the other side, the tougher side, was it as difficult, more difficult than you anticipated? No, it, it was it was difficult, right? Because you got to understand, a lot of these guys, this is their first time being told no, 
you know, from, from any level of, of ball. And so it's, it's tough. It's tough to deliver that news. And um, it's, it should never be easy. And I think if it ever gets easy, then I need to check myself. Um, but we try to do it in a way um, to bring the human approach. Um, and again, that's why we lead with gratitude, you know, thanking them for, you know, the work that they put in here. So um, it never gets easy. Um, and I think these young men, they know, um, you know, kind of where it is. But again, it's the honesty and the transparency that we share with them as the, as into the why um, they didn't make it and where we see them. Um, that again, it, it, when it's time, you know, this is a revolving door and some of these guys could very well end up being one, you know, end up being back here you know, at some point. So um, we would think that we left even the guys that we didn't bring back in a way that guys, if the opportunity presented itself, that they would want to come back. What's the kind of cliff notes version on what you told guys about what they have to do to, to stick around? No, I mean, you know, it's, it's not a time to relax, you know, just because you made the initial 53. Um, I think it was, what, Tuesday? It was just, hey, this is the 53 for Tuesday. <laughs> you know, tomorrow's a different day. The waiver hadn't come out yet, you know, and gave a couple uh, position specific things for them to continue to work on, you know, whether it's here on the field, whether it's in the weight room with Frank, um, and just how to go about their business. Like they have to continue to work. It's not a time to relax. Ray, a lot of core pieces on this team are free agents after this season, the veteran players. Have there been discussions about extending some of those players ahead of the start of the season? No, uh, we haven't had any of those discussions yet. Um, you know, first time, my first time in this role, um, I'm still getting to know, you know, a lot of these guys, and I lean heavily on Mike um, with that, with the guys that have been here. Um, but more than anything, we're trying, our focus is to get to the point where we are now, uh, just in terms of, uh, you know, putting the best roster that to get us ready for uh, next week and the start of the season. Um, and then just allowing these guys to play, you know. And, you know, I've said it, uh, you know, a few times, we won't negotiate in public. You know, and when it comes to these guys and their job security or lack thereof or whatever it may be. Um, but if these guys earn, you know, opportunity to have those, you know, those talks, um, there are guys that you earmark that you hope play well, that you can enter those conversations. But, you know, we'll enter those conversations when the time presents itself. Do you have conversations during the season or are you a guy that, that puts all that on pause during the, during the season? I think in this day and age, man, you have to you know, at least establish contact with the agent and say, hey, here's what we're thinking, you know, and um, and just take every case, you know, on a case by case basis. Um, because again, you don't want that to become a distraction, you know, particularly for a guy that may be playing well and then you start the conversation and it may not go. You know, you guys are all have been around a while. You understand you have your relationships, you know, the art of negotiation, you know, we're going to piss the agent off. The agent's going to piss us off. And if, you know, you don't want that to affect the player. So you have to be strategic um, in how you approach those conversations. How do you think DeAndre fit into the culture of the team? And, and what's maybe something you learned about him over the last couple of months? Hop's been great. You know, he's been great. He's a worker. Um, and just the way he carries himself, um, you know, in and outside of the building. Um, you know, you see him on the field. He's, he's not a dude that does a whole lot of talking. But if you if you know Hop, you know he's a fun-loving, you know, good dude. He's you know he's got jokes, um, but it's been a joy, you know, having him around. I'm pretty sure when he first got here, some of the young receivers made him feel like an old head. You know, I, I remember walking through like one of his first days here, and one of the young guys, I kind of walked by him, and I was like, oh man, I I remember growing up watching him play, you know. And I'm sure that makes him feel old, but he embraces all those young guys, and he's pulling people, you know, along with him. Um, and he's he's just been great to have around. With Brian Tannehill, I mean, you guys traded up to get Levis the year before. They traded up to get Willis. How has he handled that situation, just knowing that there's a future replacement for him on the roster? Ryan's the consummate pro, you know, and again, it, it, it starts with the open line of communication uh, between Ryan and Mike and knowing you know, where we are and how we see things. And Ryan's focused on, you know, being the best version of himself. You got to understand he's coming in, he has a new quarterback coach. So there are some new things that he's learning, um, you know, a new system. I'm sure Ryan isn't focused on who we drafted, you know, last year or this year. You know, Ryan's focused on this upcoming season and how he can be the best version of himself for us. I thought Malik has. I thought Malik has grown. You know, there were conversations had with Malik prior to me being hired, um, 
that I were made privy to and just watching him take that to heart. You know, I thought he had a really good off season. You know, OTAs and prior to OTAs, he was never not in the building. He was never not here around town working and pulling guys with him and having the receivers with him. And I think that's shown, you know, in his play on the field. Um, and Will is continuing to grow. Um, a, a rookie um, learning a new system. I think this is maybe the third or fourth offense he's been in in as many years. Um, so he's learning the NFL game. And I think, you know, the way he works and the way he fits into that room, I think he'll be fine. Into a job you've always wanted to have. Uh, how, how has that experience been for you so far? Um, it's been cool. Uh, it really has, and I say it every time. Uh, I'm, I'm in a lucky spot, you know, to come into a place that's, you know, pretty much established um, and has a culture. And you know, myself, Chad, and A. Rod, we get to come in and add our flavor, you know, to it, and you know, and bring it all together. It's, it's a collaborative effort. You know, Mike and I, we're never not talking. We're never not going through scenarios. And having someone like that to lean on, you know, in, in situations and even piecing a roster together, you know, and having conversations with the coaches uh, is, is made it fun. You know, it's been a fun process. Um, you know, we're undefeated, so everything's great. You know, if in the event, um, you know, we lose a couple games in a row, we'll – We'll have another conversation then to see how see how it's going, but uh, it's been great, and I'm I'm extremely thankful to be here. Thank you. Appreciate it. Yep. Thank Appreciate you, man. Well, uh, condolences to to him and his family, the the, the Cowboys organization. Gil was, uh, you know, somebody that I met coming out of college. I met him uh, at the Walter Camp All American Banquet and spent the weekend with him. Uh, just his passion for football. Uh, was, was infectious. You could tell how much he loved the game and uh, loved being around it. Do you feel <clears> now uh, having Nick Folk on the on the uh, roster and and Cade York coming onto the practice squad? How do you feel about your kicker situation at this point? Well, Nick's our kicker. You know, Nick Nick is our kicker. I feel really good about about him and about what he's done and what he will do. Um, you know, just felt like it was a good opportunity to to bring Cade in here to um, you know allow him to. You know, develop and work, and you know, see where he's at. Is Nick going to be your kick offer? Nick is our kicker. We don't have a kick offer. Kick kickoffs have been an issue for him over the last couple of years. Do you anticipate he can um, get better at it, or, or yeah, I don't know if that. Well? You know, I mean, I don't know if there's an, there that's been something that's an issue. You know, I mean, I think that um, you know, whatever they were asking him to do, I think we feel comfortable. Uh, you know, whether we're going to kick a touchback or whether we're going to go cover kicks and, you know, wherever we do it at. So. Well, was a competitive coverage player. You know, veteran has, has played uh, snaps and, you know, kind of looking at where we were with, you know, Anthony Kendall and his contributions and, and special teams and, allowing him to, to, to make it onto the roster. I just felt like we needed to add a, a veteran guy and, you know, Kendall you know, showed well in, in his preseason exposure and is a veteran that, that's, that's played in this league. How about you, Gibson, you know, can continue to develop there? What are some things that you liked about him that you know, wanted to uh, make him bring him in? Uh, we, we, we'll keep you updated on that transaction when it, when it happens. So many young guys who've never seen any real NFL action ready. Um, yeah, I'm sure there is. Um, you know, the biggest thing, just continue to try to talk to them about whether they're, you know, let's say on the offensive, you know, package uh, or the show team, how critical those show team reps are uh, for their development, for, for them to improve. I'm trying to talk to them about preparing as a starter. Uh, each and every day that they come in here, the, the work that they're going to have to put in, how they're going to have to work harder now that they're here uh, than they did to, to try to get here. That, that's the whole goal. But you know, once the season starts, just there's not that many reps. There's not as many reps as there was in training camp. So trying to use those show team opportunities uh, to really improve and, and develop. What's like the, the mindset shift now that you got the preseason behind you, a lot of moves behind you, now you've got a game regular season game coming up in about 10 days, how powerful move, maybe change in the building, the approach? 
uh, I mean, I don't. I hope the mood hasn't changed. I hope we come work prepared and ready to go, with uh, some energy, with enthusiasm, with a willingness to to learn and improve and study the game plan, study our opponents, uh, and, and, and transition that to the practice field and, and work on, you know, timing and, and precision, uh, and continue to work on all the things that we believe are important to winning. How do you like it? <coughs> Ryan Bless you. Has been you. Just as far as like staying locked in, despite knowing that you know Levis is on the roster, Willis is on the roster, future replacements for him. How do you like the way he's been locked in? Regardless? Yeah, I don't. You know, all the other stuff. I think the most important thing is that Ryan is locked in. Ryan is focused. I love where his attitude is. I love his demeanor. I love his communication with the receivers. I love his re communication with Tim. Um, so excited about his season and, and, and him playing quarterback for us. How about the communication with you just as far as like always knowing where he stands regardless of whatever background noise is out there? Ryan and I have a great relationship as far as I'm concerned. You know, have the ability to talk to him about different things on and off the field. Um, how he feels, you would have to ask him. I, I mean, I hope it it's the same. You know, I don't see any issues I, I i like the way that he approaches practice and approaches his job and very professional means a lot to him Is Kyrus your opening day pump return? uh well we're like jimmy mentioned 10 days away so we'll kind of see where we're at in 10 days seven guys in that room what was the kind of the thinking behind that on the initial 53 of that different things of getting guys on a roster and kind of carry Kyle for a day. And so that's how it looks. It's now it's six after the first 24 hours. Go ahead. Thanks. Uh, what, what have you learned about uh, DeAndre in his time with the team and how he's maybe even taken on a leadership role, even though he's kind of a newbie to, to kind of your system? Who's that? Uh, DeAndre. Oh, ha. Yeah. I, Sorry. I, Apologize. Have really just enjoyed his professionalism, his uh, the way that he's practiced, his communications with Ryan, the receivers, uh, communication with Tim. I mean, he's run a lot of these routes and, and run a lot of these plays, and um, enjoy the competitiveness that that he shows in practice. Um, so by seeing that, I know that it means something for to him. And, uh, and I appreciate the, the time that you know we've had together, and we'll continue to work and try to give them opportunities to help us win. It's been been good addition. Mike, you reported in a, uh, in a piece in the Ringer today about saying that turning the football over is a non-negotiable. Uh, with Malik, while well, he's made a lot of improvements, turn the football over in the preseason. How much is that a focus over the next ten days if he is going to be your backup quarterback? Well, one, I appreciate you, you know, keeping up on me and, and following. Um, but I don't think I said non-negotiable. I said that that's just how you'll lose. Maybe I said non-negotiable. I don't remember. Uh, it was one of the couple interviews that I did. It it uh, it has to improve. You know, what I mean, it it has to, and and he knows that. All the good things that that Malik did, um, he he knows that. And again, there can be, I'm trying to make a play, but at some point in time, we just have to make them good ones uh, and learn from them, not make the same mistake twice. Um, and just knowing coverages and say, I'm not forcing it in there. I'm just going to live to fight another day. I'm going to check it down. But also there's some elements to, yeah, you have to throw it into some spaces down the field. And one thing that we had talked about um, coming out of Minnesota with those things that we were looking to improve on was our ability to, to try to move the ball down the field. So we took the shot to Chris, which was great. You know, Chris came back. The defender wasn't playing the ball. Chris did a great job, did what we coached him to do. Um, they threw it in there to Nick. Nick ran through the catch. So a lot of great positive things. And then we just we have to eliminate some of those things. And then also, you know, like we tell every quarterback, when it, when it breaks down, you got to have two hands on the ball. You got to, you know, pull through some arm tackles, and, and you know, we can't be loose with the ball. Same thing we tell Derek. Same thing we'll tell, you know, Julius and DeAndre and 
chig and everybody that carries it. So you know, we, we understand that we have to be better uh, and, and improve our ball security. We also have to improve you know, our ability to disrupt the football and turn it over. And we have to, we have to hit them hard enough to knock it loose. We have to knock it off the quarterback. We have to tip some passes and intercept them. And we have to, you know, make some plays in the deep part of the field. Loved how he's worked to get back and just, you know, again, he just kept saying, Hey, I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. And it's like, you know, this is kind of the conversations that you have with players and, you know, it's been Good to see him work extremely hard to get out there and push and find ways to get in as opposed to looking for ways to get out. And he was like, just give me a chance. Let me get out there. Let me practice. Let me work. And, and he even took some team reps yesterday and you know, came through that really good. And um, we'll, we'll get some more in there today. So again, we'll just keep working him in there, see how he responds to, to the work and and then the other thing I really appreciate is we've had guys that are working with them now back at practice where, you know, Jeff Simmons can go over there to the side and work three quarter speed and say, I know that this guy's just now getting back. What can I do to help you? Uh, whether that's pass rushers that are just coming off the ball and maybe not going full speed or going through contact or doing some things to help them. So I appreciate that from the players and I, and I thank them as well. Is he a guard? At this point, uh, we'll see where he goes when he gets back. I mean, he's worked at both positions yesterday and in the few reps that he had. Mike, I know a lot of people were kind of surprised to see just three tight ends kept on the roster, given there's no fullback on this team this year. And, um, you know, the way that this team's run a lot of two tight end sets in the past, is that maybe indicative of what the new offense is going to demand in terms of personnel? Or is that just the way that the chips fell this year? Well, we felt like that's kind of where it was coming out of camp. That could change. You know, the practice squad gives you, you know, we tried to, you know, Rand and I, his staff and our coaching staff tried to go through and, you know, give us insulation at each position to where we felt like, okay, who would be the next guy in? Who's, who's, his, uh, who's his backup? Who's his replacement? Who could we, um, you know, put in there uh, through the course of the week if, if we needed to? So that's where it is today, and that could change next week and, Throughout the season, building the practice squad. Yeah, what's the challenge seeing potential on guys who are somewhat about what's kind of between your between positions? In between which positions? Yeah, I, I think Otis is going to work hard to be a linebacker and a special teams player, and you know, it was really cool to see him and Chance um, and Monty. You know, Monty coming back finally. Uh, get those reps and, and be um, Werner and, and be Davis yesterday in, in, a, in a show team opportunity and showed them tape of how those guys play and how quickly they, they see pullers and, and, and how quickly they get back into coverage. And, you know, I, I thought just those guys getting back into and playing linebacker, you, there's a lot of good players that have played on this show team and uh, developed and, and, and improved that way. Woods dealing with behind him now? Well, in this particular case, yes, but I will say not to this matter, but we're always going to have things that we deal with outside of here or we deal with injuries. Um, it's part of life, it's part of professional sports. You know, so when Monty was healthy, you know, he returned and you know that that's where we're at. And so we, we have to make sure that you know, he's, he's prepared to, to, to help us going forward in the football game. I asked it that way because he indicated that it wasn't, wasn't an injury. Well, oh, I mean, I don't know if he did, didn't say that. I just, when, when Monty was healthy, Monty returned to practice and when he was ready to go and cleared, you know, so however he phrased it, that's, that's up to him. Um, and again, we, we, we expect Monty to, to be out there and be, you know, use his speed, use his, you know, explosiveness and you know, practice, got some team reps on our side and got some on the show team and, you know, it's going to start off and knows that he has to be a, a dynamic special teams player for us that, that can run and then work his way to, in there defensively. What did, Xavier, what did Xavier Newman show you in camp preseason to make the jump from being a practice squad guy to the 53? Well, oh, just, you know, the competitiveness, his, you know, ability to play center and guard and, 
it was a it, those you know, between him and Roos and, and Ruppy, I thought those guys all improved and you know they'll continue to compete and, and battle, um, you know as we work work our way through the season. And so we just felt like, you know, coming out of camp that, you know, that's where we were. For Le Levis and, and Willis, like shifting to so much game focus, how do you go about handling their reps and, and getting their development? Mm -hmm. I think that's interesting. We've tried to you know. Give them both opportunities. Uh, trying to find where, where places where where Brian maybe could could not take as many reps. Also trying to to do some things with some younger guys based on health and receivers and defensive backs seven on seven. You know after practice and try to get some of those throws in and you know because it is a challenge to try to get two young guys developed but make sure that. You know, they're also getting the reps that they need to be ready for the game. What the new rules changed, you know, the way you build a practice squad from when you first took over to the rules that they've had since COVID. And you've used that practice squad a lot over the last couple of years. So when you went about building this roster with Rand and making the final 53, did you think and approach it differently knowing how to use the practice squad? Well, I don't know if we've approached it any differently, but I would say that there's certainly guys that you think um, they're a developmental player and you're going to give them some time and they'll determine how much time that they get uh, based on their uh, effort and based on their improvement, um, their attitude and all those things. And then there's you know probably another group that you say you know, would feel comfortable you know, probably putting them into the game on short notice if you know if you needed to so okay. about Traylon's progress hmm? thanks Mike appreciate it